Hey, welcome back. We're doing a demo of a Gemray test for Windows. And uh, I'd like to show you a design I call the Tribute. This is uh, my older designs. Here's the geometry. The outline is a 1, 2, 3, 12-sided outline, but uh, the symmetry is threefold mirror image symmetry. This is a good design to use for quartz if you uh, are concerned about the head shadow effect. Let me show you how that design performs in Gemray Test. Where is it? Where are you, Tribute? There you are. Drag and drop into the icon. And here we have the optical performance. You can see that it's very resistant toward tilt to the south and then to the north uh, not quite so much, but it does real well. This is a, I think this is a good design for quartz for stones that are round as a, as a good option to a standard round brilliant. Okay, I'd like to open up another copy of this and let's see if uh, Jim Ray can further optimize this. So let's take the tribute and drag it into the Jim Ray test. Close that and then let's start the automatic optimization. Okay, here's a fairly common problem. Jim Ray has dropped the crown angle from 32 degrees to 18 and a half degrees. Let's say I don't want to want it to do that. So let's put in some limit factors for the crown. In particular, the minimum crown scale factor, let's put that at 1. So we don't want we'll let we don't want Jim Ray to lower the crown angle less than what it originally was, but it can it's free to raise it up to a factor of 1.5. The pavilion minimum limit is set by default at a half degree above the critical angle, and 0.783 is the scale factor to accomplish that. This design has a very steep pavilion. So let's begin the optimization here and see what happens. Okay, we'll just repeat that process again. And now you see that I've got 32 and a half instead of 32. So it sets a penalty factor for angles less than the scale factor of 1, which is an angle less than 32 degrees. Okay, let's see how this performs. Okay, so we have a modest, if I compare the plots on the left and the right, you see I have a modest improvement, a decent improvement in the face up brilliant brilliance. Not so much for the SC2 models, but for the other light lighting models, the cosine and the ISO models. They perform better face up here. Okay, so I'm going to close the original so I don't get confused. Let's say I want to keep these angles now uh, and tell Jimcat about those angles. How do I get those angles out of the program and back into Jimray? Well, the secret is uh, in these boxes here. It's not really a secret. But. So let me open up the design, tribute Jimcat again. And um, see if I can get this where we could see it. I'm going to use the edit scale command, and I'm going to change the Z, positive Z scale factor, and I'm going to multiply by. 1.0208, which is hardly anything at all as compared to 1, and divide by 1. I'm going to click on OK, and I'm going to answer No to the next question. Now you'll see that Jim Ray has, has scaled the crown. I can do the same on the pavilion, or the equivalent on the pavilion. So edit, scale, click the pavilion box, and then type in the scale factor for the pavilion, which is 1.0548 click OK and then no. So now we've scaled the design and when we print it out it'll show the, the new the new angles. In particular you might see somewhere I now have a 32.53 on the on the crown. Yeah that's facet D. So pick facet D is the main so if you look in the crown, of course, that's the biggest non-table facet, so that is the main. 
the crown, the pavilion, it will pick the lowest pavilion angle, which I'm guessing is step one. And step one is indeed the lowest, and it's 49.52 instead of 49.51. Well, it's just a little round off error. So that's how you get the angles out of uh, GEMCAD, out of GEMRAY, and back into GEMCAD. Okay, that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for listening.